Hello everybody and this is Meera Bansali here on Art Connect on the Neelam Saktena page and with me today is a very awesome, awesome guest and she is Dr. Paramita Mukherjee Malik. You must have heard her name many a times, so I'm sure of that because she is much more than, uh, you know, a poetess. She's a lot more. So par Dr. Paramita, please introduce yourself, please. Firstly, thank you so much, Meera, for inviting me to this Neelam Saxena page show. And I'm thankful to Neelam Ji also. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Um, uh, when I introduce myself, firstly, I want to say that I, I love science and I love literature. That's and, and I feel because I have done my PhD in genetic toxicology, taught in a college for many years, been a principal of a college, and then suddenly I started loving poetry and I came into literature. And it makes me very feel very complete, you know, that I have a little humble knowledge of science and I have a little humble knowledge of literature. So I am here, you know, and now I am so, so deep into uh, poetry that I have two forums under me and I'm blessed to have these forums under me. I am the president and the initiator of the Intercultural Poetry and Performance Library, Mumbai chapter. And I am also the cultural convener and the literary coordinator of another very good organization called International Society for uh, Intercultural Studies and Research, ECSAR. So I look after these two uh, in the Western zone. I look after this in the Western Indian zone. So I'm very blessed in the sense that I love promoting poetry and having these two uh, forums under me, it helps me a lot to promote poetry. So here am I. Uh, my humble me that is, that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah this is truly humble because i think uh ma'am has just uh, forgotten i might say to tell her about her acclosure award where are those those are missing right now <laughs> so you did not tell that to your guests, please even do that. Please, please tell us about all your awards. Um, yes, awards are, I feel, you know, when you talk about your own awards, I, I don't feel comfortable talking about them because I feel <laughs> awards okay. are something which help me and other poets and other artists to, to know that you're going in the right direction. You know, you're going in the True. right direction. And I'll again True. tell you, tell all of you that since I was completely from science, from genetics to literature, I knew nothing of poetry as such. It was my heart which helped me to write poetry, my emotions on paper. So even now I feel that I'm a student of literature, you know, I have not been <laughs> taught poetry. So, you know, I feel very, uh, I think, I, I feel uncomfortable talking about my uh, <laughs> colleagues or my, uh, my yeah. awards. And, uh, and yes, yeah. Also, it's, no it's, issues, no, I'm, no I'm, issues, ma'am, at all. They, they but give me <laughs> encouragement, that is it. Yeah. Yes, but we are blessed today, truly blessed today to have you amidst us. And, you know, we have this uh, show going on and, uh, you know, you are uh explaining and you're giving your uh, best over here that is like you know you are being here with us right now at this moment is a very special thing mm -hmm. and that is an award for me that you are over here so thank you so much for being here tonight and so uh, ma'am uh, i have always you know yes as a child the first thing whenever you know you ask the child what do you want to become when you grow up and the first answer is always a scientist or an astronaut and here i'm talking with one of the finest scientists so ma'am just a question which is not related to art but yet it is related to you so how does one become a scientist <laughs> what is the formal education required scientist I, I have done my phd in science so you know like it is like doing your gen, going into a general nine and a subject, doing your BSc, then MSc, then PhD. So you're totally doing going into research, deep research. Like I've done research for five years for my PhD and then 
then I've got my PhD from, uh, I was a national scholar, I got my PhD from uh, CSIR, that is the central, um, um, yeah, so CSIR, a government organization, you must be knowing. So it's, it's, yes. it's like that. So you have to pursue your subject, whatever you are doing, if you're interested in physics, if you're interested in genetics, if you're interested in whatever science, you are pursuing it and you go on studying, that is, and you do deep research and then you become a scientist. So it's it's that way. Right. Yeah. Yes. Now from a scientist jumping to arts, like science and arts are two different streams like all together. So what you know, uh, what motivated you to take up poetry? You know, uh, how did you stumble upon writing poetry? Um, okay, this is a very interesting question. Uh, <laughs> it's very much to my heart. Uh, I was the head of an institution. And when you are at the top, you know, you're quite lonely then. You're quite lonely. Yes. And sometimes, apart from the examinations going on and this and that, so I was only alone in the cabin, my cabin, my principal's cabin. And so, right. you know, I used to write. I used to write. And I was always fascinated with the English language. I was always fascinated with the English language. So I used to write a lot. And suddenly I thought, and I was very fascinated with people writing poetry. How do they write such nice poems, you know, their heart, their feelings on paper. And when I was alone, I used to write, write, write. And then apart from my work, sometimes when I got a little time, I used to write. And after five years, suddenly I saw, you know, this diary of mine was full of poems, full of poems. Wow. And then I said, why don't I publish it? And uh, my husband, who's always supporting whatever I'm doing, he suddenly said, you writing poems? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, you're from Italy, deep science. I said, yes. Yeah. Then, then he said, yeah, yeah, very good. He always encourages me. So he said, yeah, yeah, please publish it. And I went on searching for good, uh, good publishers. And publishers. then a very, very good publisher. They said, you know, we take 5,000 poetry books a year and uh, a year or a season, whatever. I don't remember this. So, and it's only 2% we select and your poems are very good. So, you know, it was a great encouragement for me because I have never written something in literature before, you know. I used to yeah. write, I have many international papers in science, in all international journals, scientific journals. By then I'm talking about uh, some years yeah. back. So I was very much thrilled. I said, oh, my God, such a big publisher. And saying this in words that, you know, that only 2% is selected and your work is very good. So that encouraged me a lot. And then that became a genuine of mine, you know, a great passion. <laughs> I started writing one after the other. And my 10th book is to be released soon. Yes. So you know how mad I am <laughs> about poetry, that I'm continuously I writing and publishing. Yeah. Books. I mean, uh, even when you're say, speaking about it, it shows, you know, your face is growing and it shows that passion that you're having for it. Yeah. <laughs> I can literally see that smile and, you know, <laughs> I mean, the glow is totally different. It's superb, you know, when you are saying about the, you know, about your poetry and everything. Yeah. Uh, now my uh, question would, uh, my next question would be, you said you have written scientific journals and now we are writing poetry. So what, what, what is the difference, you know, when you write scientific journals? I mean, obviously they have, they are very, uh, I would say, uh, statistical. And what about poetry? Like how uh, do you tend to mix it sometimes? Okay, let me say something. If this question has been asked in many interviews, like you being into science again, you being into poetry. So, you know, sometimes it's totally, yeah. totally two extremes of a spectrum. So how is it yeah. that you bring these together? So I feel, you know, a scientist and a poet both have one big thing in common. And I'll come to this later on because I'll say two more things before that. <laughs> Well, you also mentioned when we were having a lovely discussion before it went live, you said a scientist yeah. is thinking out of the box, right? A scientist True, is thinking right. out of the box. So is a poet. If you see, a poet is associating something and then evocating it. That is bringing it, bringing the emotion on paper. 
right so as right. a poet also he or she is also thinking out of the box like if an uh, if a common man sees a cloud and a poet sees a cloud it will be totally different totally the thought will be totally different so as a scientist yeah, right. if he or she sees a cloud he will analyze it he will totally think it in a very scientific way so out of the box thinking True. is common for a scientist and a poet then right the thrill the thrill of knowing something you know a scientist can never be a scientist if her observation is not very good observation yes. has to be 100% so is a poet's mm. observation a poet observes everything a poet's observation and a scientist's observation i feel is very very similar because if you if you don't observe you cannot do an experiment and you cannot write the observation of what you have seen so as a poet when i see certain things i go on observing i go on absorbing it in my mind so again these two you know these two emotions of mine come together and the main main thing which i was saying which i'll come third is imagination imagination yeah. without imagination in capital letters you cannot be a scientist without imagination you cannot be a poet if you do not have imagination Absolutely. you can when when um, michael madhusudan that wrote about the clouds he imagined the clouds to be carrying his message so you know you have right. to have imagination and when newton became it brought in the law of gravitation he imagined a normal man many normal men had apples fall on their head but fall on their head but only newton who thought that why did the apple fall down and not fly off so that imagination came to him and then he gave the observation then he brought out the thing called gravitation the law of gravitation similarly a poet will imagine things and then only she can write so i feel somewhere poetry and science is very very similar i mean you have explain this in such a fantastic way i was i am mean, mesmerized by your words because i felt as if you know you know you have a you have your favorite teacher in school who is explaining things to you and you are uh, listening to her you know without even blinking your eyes <laughs> so uh, the way you were explaining it and the way you brought those things you know spec you you made a whole circle out of it you know science and poetry Uh, you know you combined them in a very lovely and a beautiful thread so it was literally uh, very beautiful to understand this process because everybody does not have this thought process like you know as you said the common man will not have it so you being a scientist you being a poetess you have this wonderful thought process that goes in that you know beautiful brain of yours and when you bring it out in poetry it's absolutely mesmerizing and the way you uh, say it out with passion i've heard your poetry you know you reciting your poetry so when you even recite your poetry they bring out that passion you know so each and every poetry of yours is full of passion i mean there's something very different in that so ma'am my next question would be like um as you said that you know uh, you started writing poetry uh, as and when you were feeling lonely or something like that so uh once you started writing poetry uh, and i mean are you going to even just stop at writing poetry or are you going to go to you know you're going to explore different genres or have you already explored different genres tell us about something about your new book as well Uh, yes i have explored and i do write other things like i am trying to bring science in a very simple way for children and adults you know there's a very oh, sad that is fantastic happening. yeah so i write a lot of science i'm trying to bring science like i've done a book with a very famous uh, environmentalist called girls to hisses and their homes where we bring concepts and awareness about conservation and climate change for children in verses so you know where we tell the children that what is climate change what is conservation how do we conserve so we are i am trying to bring science in a very simple way into literature 
So, you know, because, you know, when many general, in fact, that the other day I was talking to a, a lecturer, a, 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 a friend of mine who teaches in a college, like she teaches chemistry, must be she's listening also. So, you know, she was <laughs> saying, like, you know, even, even I know that gradually the general lines of science, you know, general lines of sciences gradually becoming very dilute, very dilute. Yes. And you would believe, I remember I was many, many years back when I was doing PhD, I had been invited. I was nominated as a Young Scientist's Award. I did not get the award, but I was nominated. So when I'd gone for this, uh, for the Science Congress, Indian Science Congress, I remember the president of the Science Congress saying that only one to two percent of people are coming into general science. Why so? You know, why aren't people coming? So we have to bring back people into the general science stream as well. So I feel we have to do a lot to bring the people. It's not that I've come into literature that I've forgotten my science. I need to keep science in a very beautiful bowl, you know, a beautiful platter, yeah. silver platter. It's like that, a salver. So, you know, I feel I am trying my best to bring science in a very simplistic, very interesting manner for children and adults alike. So that is one of my uh, other genre of, of writing. And I love traveling. I love traveling. So I've uh, tried going to many places of the world. So I love, I love uh, writing uh, travelogues. I write travelogues a lot. That is a fascination, you know. In fact, my family teases me wherever I go. I have a notebook <laughs> and a pen, you know, and I'm jotting down things. Because nowadays, everything you get on internet, but the feelings you will not get on internet. The feelings of exactly. nuances of the nuances of the travel, nuances of the thrill of the travel, you'll not get. So I keep jotting down. And I remember many years back, my daughter, she's an adult now. Um, now, when she was three years, I remember we had gone to um, gone to the Natural History Museum, London. And I was always I'm writing with a pen and paper, you know, and she was a baby, she was just three years. And I had to give her a tiny little notebook and a pencil. So she was also continuously scribbling because she did not know ABC also then. The oh, yes. Also. As so, three -year -child yeah. so I was astonished that what's happening? What is she writing? When I went back to the hotel, I saw the whole book has been scribbled in, in complete nice lines, you know, every line she has only scribbled. So, you know, from then on, and she's also a very good writer. In fact, she excels me in writing at times. <laughs> so I feel maybe, you know, she has tried to emollate me to, to, to try to yes. see what I'm doing, try to copy me and, and you know, like do what, emulate me and do things which, which I do. So, you know, she, that, that, that copying of me has maybe somewhere made her a good writer as well. So, you know, I love travelogues. I love to bring science into, um, uh, into, into literature. And I love to write about, yeah, so these are the, and in, and poetry, I do a lot of genres, little, lot of different genre, yes. genre, genres. Yes. Yeah, uh, your latest, I, I guess one of your poetries has been recited or by sung by Anup Jalota, if, uh, sir, yeah, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Yes. So there yes. is a video released uh, during Valentine's last year, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. 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 So those of who you do not know about this, uh, I will later on post the video link uh, to this chat or to this uh, video that uh, will be shared later on uh, on the platform. So, you know, you can have a look and uh, just a small uh, break. I would say not exactly a break, but yes, I would like to read some comments and the people that who are have already joined us. So there are so many people that have joined us and we have Sandeep Kumar ji saying hi. We have Mosad ji saying hi. We have Urna Bose. And she says that, hello, that was a terrific explanation and she loved it. We have Purna Roy. Uh, hi, you. Purna, and thanks. We have uh, Santosh Bakaya. She's, um, she says, great to see you, uh, Paramita Mukherjee. Yes, we have Anup Jalan Bhaiya over here. Namaskar, Anup Bhaiya. And uh, she has, like, there are many comments by 
by uh, Santosh Bakaya ji. So please, I would uh, suggest that after the show, do revert back to her. <laughs> no, I can read. I can read. Santosh we have Uma Bose also. I can read. Yes. <laughs> yes. मुखर्जी मलिक एंड शी इज राइट नाउ लाइव विथ अस ऑन द नीलम सक्सेना पेज एंड एज वी कंटिन्यू विथ आर टॉक so ma'am uh, as you said that you know you write so many genres and everything my one question is uh, you know obviously with your permission i'm asking this question uh, what is the scope of earning as only as an author do you think like as authors only or as poetesses only you know <laughs> how fair, how do you think we would fare <laughs> can i be honest can i be honest meera yes yes please ma'am yes ma'am i feel um, uh poetry still doesn't have a scope of earning much uh still doesn't have a scope of earning much because it's always like so you have to do some other job and then go about with poetry of until of course you have suddenly become or an author also suddenly you have <laughs> become a vikram sage suddenly you have become a vikram yes. sage or suddenly you have become uh, who's this that guy who writes movies like a very famous chetan bhagat or robin sharma or yeah, yeah chetan chetan bhagat <laughs> if you are luck clicks and you've become very famous and of course or or uh, yeah neel kanthan and all these big authors yeah. who have suddenly there they've really and they are very good they are very good i'm not i'm not trying to be little any they're very 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 good so of course they yeah. need the respect they 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 get but of course you need some luck to earn in being an author or being a poet so still not maybe you know later on maybe yeah. there will be platforms where you know nowadays young so, people are so good at technology and uh, like i am not very tech savvy maybe you know gradually it will grow the scope of earning will grow there'll be blogs which will bring in money there'll be different uh, platforms which will bring in money because nowadays kid nowadays young people are so so very intelligent and so much more advanced than us. so you know maybe there will be a lot of scope in, in a few years but now i don't quite see a scope of earning much so yeah, yeah i asked you this question basically because as a, you know you you said you have been a principal in a college and you know so you always mentor children and i have a, Uh, you know even i take uh, classes or something and i do mentors for uh, children so sometimes they do tell me ma'am we want to be an author like you and i'm like uh, authorship doesn't pay much and then <laughs> so when i uh, i when i thought that this is a good opportunity to ask you as well because you know uh, people need to know the truth oh uh, you know okay it is a noble profession we are doing a good job we are opening the eyes uh, you know of the common man to something very special and very important as well in your case because you are bringing science and arts together in such a beautiful manner you are opening you are bringing science to the common man uh, you know to the children who are the next future you know the future generation you are getting that science to them so yeah that is something very commendable uh, thing that you are doing and uh, my next question would sorry, be ma'am sorry i'm um, sorry to interrupt you before your next question, yeah. can i take 2 minutes to say something yes yes ma'am yes ma'am please touring i do a lot of workshops with school or uh, all around in mumbai to bring okay. the love of poetry okay with teachers and with students to bring in the love of poetry so you know sometimes i i might sound like mary antoniette at this moment but sometimes <laughs> i feel i feel you know there is sometimes something more than money at times i feel yes. poetry True. makes you a complete person poetry makes you a good person 
poetry makes you you know because your emotions you can express them there's a therapy called writing exactly. therapy so poetry is like yes. a therapy whatever you are feeling your heart's feeling your emotions you put it down on paper so that way you are becoming a much more better person and i feel when i True. promote poetry in children i feel i am bringing up a, a new generation of good people and that is a scarcity now you know that is a big scarcity so i feel there is at certain times there is something more than money and that is being a good yes. person so i think poetry yes. makes people a good person and it has made me a complete person and and i have a holistic view about everything now so i feel poetry gives you much more than money at times Yes, you so, have already taken uh, the answer. I mean, the next question was, uh, how did it help in your own personal mental wellness? Uh, that was the question that I was I've coming answered, to. I've answered that. I've answered that. I've answered. Yes, yes, you have answered that already. And uh, my obviously, uh, you know, uh, the question always arises for an artist that when you are practicing an art. uh there's this uh you know there is something called a self satisfaction you did something or you wrote something and you're like okay fine now i'm satisfied so does that happen with you or do you think there's you know you know how many times do you have to cut it and rewrite it and you are like no nah, i still need to you know better myself so do you have that phase you know going through you sometimes like right? do you have that i mean does that happen yeah, yeah that happens to everybody <laughs> but sometimes you know when i write and then i re re read that and i feel very happy oh my god i have written this you know sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you know there is a, a time constraint supposing they have given you yeah. a prompt prompt and you have to give it within 2 days then you know it be, yeah. you become a little mechanical but i try to take the prompts and write it yeah but so then maybe not always sometimes you feel it could have been better it could have been better yeah. but but sometimes again like i said i feel very happy oh my god i've written this myself it's so nice you know and then then so it's it's a mixture it's a mixed feeling it's a mixed feeling yes so uh, ma'am uh, i mean you have uh, my next question actually was uh, you know how would you uh, mentor or you you know aspire artists to join but then you are already doing such commendable job you already have you know you go to schools you have uh, writing clubs and you, i mean you are already mentoring them so i have i mean i'm out of questions now <laughs> because you have answered almost everything but i really want to hear more from you because uh, what words that you say are truly uh, you know inspiring for the next generation so can you uh, you know uh, give us more inputs uh, about how do uh, one connect with you if you know they want to join your uh, the place where you are mentoring or how does one connect with you if they want you to call over for say mentoring a school or something like that for the next generation so how how can you know a person come to you how can they connect with you to uh, what like you can email me they can email me if you if you want you can put the email id here and yes ma'am yeah yes ma'am so, uh, i at the moment yeah. do not have your email id uh, i just have your insta id yeah, yes ma'am please please yeah. yes ma'am please do yeah so your yeah, email id and ma'am is also there on insta uh, as i guess poetry underscore 31 or something poetry underscore world 31 Poetry world thirty yeah. one, yeah. Word thirty one, yeah. Word. So I'm just putting that also. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I would even like to know about your experience with Anup Janota sir, because that uh, is something uh, you know everybody does not get the chance to, <laughs> uh, you know, be on the same page with him. My email ID is this, and my Insta handle is just a second. Insta handle. Yes. and the is um 3 score world 21 yes i put my insta handle as well so they can connect yes, people can connect with me yeah yeah with with anup ji uh with anup ji yeah. like you know he i know him for many years now he's a very good person 
he has uh, he has released many of my books many of my poetry books oh so yeah i think two books he has released yeah two books he has released and every time he reads the poems he used to he used to read the poems he used to tell me paramita i really like your poems paramita i really like your poems <laughs> so one day we were just uh, you know having a discussion and then we both came up with this idea this project of me reciting my poems and he will sing sing my poem like you know and this is the first time in his almost 44 45 years of career that he sang an english song for the first time so yeah. he said romita english song i've never sung i said no 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 we'll go 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 together we'll we'll do it together so he said okay okay and then then he put music he composed the music and then uh, jolly mukherjee he 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 you know gave the music to it and but it was the composition of the music was anup ji's so we went went along doing this so he was anup ji was very thrilled very happy because it's his first ever english song he sang so so, so like that that, that was very, like truly 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 you know i mean uh, i am getting goosebumps hearing that because uh, <laughs> i mean for generations you can say like you know generations yeah. have been listening to anup ji and uh, it is like really an honor even to talk with you as well because i mean you have connected with him and he has sung one of your poetries i mean that is truly truly amazing and uh, i have already yeah so i'll uh, for the audience i have uh, you know i'll just uh, show your email id uh, so this is the email id uh, you can see on the screen and this is the insta handle that you can see on screen so we have been talking for almost more than 30 minutes and it is a wrap up time yes time flies <laughs> uh, yeah we did not time travel but yes time does fly fast it's almost 30 minutes since we have been having this interesting talk over here so uh, to my dear listeners and to the dear viewers thank you for being continuously with us on air and uh, i have been talking to dr paramita over here and she is a scientist and a poetess and she takes pride in being both and i'm really glad today that uh, you know i could invite her on the neelam saxena page on the show art connect and have such a beautiful conversation with her so thank you to the audience and thank you to ma'am thank you for neelam b as well she is not here at the moment uh, because of some personal issues but yes she sends her love and regards and thank you everybody for being here ma'am your words please thank you mira thank you so much for inviting me here once more a big big heartfelt thank you for heartfelt gratitude from my side thank you everyone who are listening to listening and watching to this show very very dear people of mine urna purna santosh ji santosh ma'am and everybody yes. out there some of you i don't know but hello and it was so wonderful talking to you the questions were so much to my liking and i hope i did justice <laughs> to your lovely questions and thank you once mm. more yes ma'am you have been beautiful and you really you know you you gave a very uh i would say very comprehensive answers you know i mean and your explanation like a teacher you know everybody was in rapt attention as me mm-hmm. like you know, listening to you and it was wonderful listening to you mm-hmm. thank you so much for coming over thank you sir. and uh, if there has been you know internet connections then sorry for that <laughs> because i feel that somewhere the internet is lagging but yes we did continue and we did conclude this program so thank you uh, everybody thank you so much good night and see you at the next episode good bye night. good night all of you take care take care take care mira thank you thank you